So hey everyone, I'm I'm Mitchell, uh, or Obelisk on on GitHub, and uh, I'm going to tell 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 you today about uh, OS Free Eventing because there's a lot of confusion around it, and it provides a lot of benefits, but it's often not that well understood, and we get a lot of questions about it. So start off. This is what we're going to talk about. We're going to take what even are OS Query events, and why are they different? And we already have some events in OS Query, and some people are using them, and some people aren't. And we're going to talk about like what you can already have today. Um, we're going to talk about why you should care about events because if you're using like the what we talked about yesterday, like basic queries and selecting from a lot of tables, you're getting good data from it. You might not s immediately see the need to set up event tables. It seems complicated. There's a lot of stuff to do. But then even once you've started using event tables, well, you can get even more context out of them, and we'll touch on that at the end. So. What are OS query events? So you've got a computer. This computer, hopefully, is running OS query. But the thing is, is that your computer's generating all of these events. And maybe no one's listening to them. You know, you've got process starts, USB devices being plugged in, users typing on the keyboard, all kinds of stuff's going on. And so you have to decide, how am I going to consume all this data? Where is it going to go? How do I make sense of it? Well, you use OS query, of course. Because OS query can take all these things and organize them into something that you're familiar with, OS query tables. And that is what OS query tables are for. <laughs> this, this is what OS query events are for. But they're different. They're different from standard tables because the queries that you're used to running generate query at runtime. You make your query, data is generated, it gets back to you. Event tables don't work that way. They have their own thread. That thread is in charge of generating data. And then eventually you get it somehow. And we'll talk about how data gets from the thread to you. It also means caching works differently. When you use standard tables in OS Query, the data is generated right when you ask for it. Maybe if the, that table supports OS Query's caching, it's a few minutes before, but that's controllable. With events, it's completely different. When data is generated, it goes into your database plugin, which is also controlled by you and then you will get that at some point. This also means that we're storing the data for you for an indeterminate amount of time. We don't want the database to overflow, but we also don't want you to blow up your system having a whole bunch of events that no one's asking for. So you can overflow and you can lose some data that way. So why are they more difficult? Well, because you got several flags you got to configure. You know, def by flags? Well, here, we're going to add like seven more. If you saw Klong's talk yesterday, he had a whole slide up of flags that you need to configure for events. And that's exactly, I think, the way it should be, because events are complicated, but the benefits are worth it. So you have to ask yourself, how many events do I want to keep? 10,000, 20,000, 80,000? How many do I need to keep? What is my frequency for queries that I can get data back? And then events, they generate a lot of data. Can you use it all? Do you need it all? How much do you want to keep on the host before you can say, all right, I can flush this back to my database end? And this might all seem scary. But OS Query has a, all of their flags with default values. It works out of the box. It's all good. So this is how they work, sort of. This is why they're important. You select start from processes. You get some processes. But then someone does something bad, and something bad happens. But then you go, and even if you're looking specifically for what you think might be bad, if that process is already gone, you're not going to see it. That's the problem that events solves for you. So how do they actually work? And this is where stuff gets complicated. Because we're going to go into the nitty gritty here. Bam. OK. So classes, C++. Whoa, oh my. All right. So if you're querying the process events table, this is basically what happens. This is your processes table. This is what contains the generate function, kind of. And then you call into that, it generates the data, it gets back to you. The most analogous thing that OS Query has for process events is the process events table, which on OS X, or Mac OS, is implemented from OpenBSM. Now, the OpenBSM event subscriber inherits this way. And so you can see that you have the process table plugin or, or with your standard data, your processes table plugin, which inherits from table plugin, which is a plugin, which is boost not copyable, which we're not going to talk about. The event data is the OpenBSM uh, proc event subscriber, which then 
subclasses, event subscriber, which is then an event subscriber plugin. And then that <laughs> also inherits from plugin and Avenger, because you know everybody loves multiple inheritance in C++, and it's totally easy to understand. Yeah. Um, so, but that's only half of it, because what have we not talked about? Threads. I said that every event thing had a thread. There was nothing there that provides a thread. Plugins don't provide threads. Eventers don't provide threads. So, where does the data come from? Event tables need a thread. It needs to have something to listen to, something that OS query is managing, something that is taking data in from the system and then providing it to you in some way. It's also pretty much independent of everything we just saw. The proc event subscriber is where the data ends up, but it's not where the data is generated. And the thing is, it's arguably more important because you can consume data all you want, but where, how do you generate data? How do you make it useful? So we're going to summarize this. It's the event proc subscriber. Cool. But, holy God, there's another half. So, this is the other half. And the interruptible runnable down there, that's where your thread comes from. These are all classes in OS query, and your event publisher subclasses the event publisher, which is the publisher plugin, which is then also a plugin in OS query, so it works with the registry. And then the interruptible runnable, so you get your thread. And then the eventer, so you have all those nice event things that help you send events all over the place. So, how do we get data from the publisher to the subscriber? So we've got our publisher. Oh look, it's got an event. We should probably send it somewhere because that's why we're using it. Well, the registry, how does that work? Yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna gloss over that. We're just gonna send the event to the registry. And we've got some subscribers here. Those subscribers have also registered with the registry asking, these are the kinds of events that I want. The events go to the subscribers. They say, should I fire on this event? No. Should I fire on this event? Yes. And it will buffer the event. That is how events get from thread to registry to subscriber, and then eventually to your table. Because first, they need to be buffered. So this is the flow. You have your event publisher. It creates the events. It does all that good stuff with the thread on Max with CF run loops, all that kind of stuff. It then forwards data to the registry, which then will make it to the subscriber. And then it calls add. And so add, it's basically sending it into your database backend. You have to decide what this is. If you're running OS query I with events enabled, that's a standard map. If you're running OS query D with the way we've configured it, it's RocksDB. But you can have your own custom DB plugin. So if you're overloading this, or if you're using it in a non-standard configuration, you have to realize, and you have to be aware that this is what happens. When you, and then eventually, when you query, you pull the data out of the database, and you get it back over your logger plugin, or however you're choosing to do it. So these two halves make a functional table. The publisher creates events. The subscriber consumes events. The events move from the publisher through the registry to the subscriber to the database. And at query time, you're hitting the database. That is where you are pulling data from. So let's look at a simpler example, because process events is kind of hairy and different on all platforms. So let's talk about something that's only on one platform, Mac OS. So these are the three files which create the user interaction events table. And so these two parts make up the publisher, and that makes up the subscriber. If you're creating a new event publisher, you're going to follow something like this model. The event taps.h, it creates the new publisher class. It defines the new publisher, defines context and context refs. These are basically used for, oh, I want to subscribe to this publisher. And how do I define what I want to fire on? You're defining these classes here. Your event taps, this contains the thread entry point. On Mac OS, it's going to use a CF run loop probably. It also contains the startup and teardown code. So sometimes if you want to control something with flags, you'll put that in the startup code. You might choose not to start up that thread. Audit works this way. User interaction events works this way. So you'll also configure the CF run loop. This is also where you will set callbacks and push events to subscribers. Then you'll have the subscriber, which is in a different part of the code base, and it subscribes to this publisher. It asks for events. When they happen, it gets pushed to it. So it will also say, these are the kinds of events I want, registers them with the registry, 
and it will expect events to be pushed towards it. It then, once you get that callback, you have another chance to decide, what do I want to do with this event? Generally speaking, you will then take that event, do some processing, turn it into an OS query row, and then push it into your database to be queried later. So, man, I'm just hammering through those slides. That's good, because we've got another person left. All right. So, things we know. Why we need eventing tables. Why do they even exist? So, we also need to know what eventing tables exist, at least on Mac OS. We haven't really touched on Windows. It's a more Mac-focused talk. However, the Windows event log does exist. And you can pretty much rebuild everything you have here. Talk to Nick, hint, hint, click, click. So this is how we've talked about how events are created, how they go from publisher to subscriber. They go through the registry. And then how they end up in the table, because they end up in the database. And then when you query the database, you're pulling stuff out of that. But there's still some more. There's some things that I call the really specific details. And that's what really, really bothers me. So, but I promise we were not going to end on the things that annoy me or you. We're going to talk about a couple cool things that I think you can build with events. So, the really specific details. Remember before when I said that you can overflow your event? That's what happens. What happens when we get too many? Well, we have to drop them because we don't want to take down your system. That sounds bad. So, we'll drop them and we'll start with the oldest because events get a time added to them automatically. So when you're adding a new event, when it gets to the subscriber, when you add it into the database, the time is added. So that way, OS Query knows, OK, I can expire these old events either because they've been queried and the event expiry is set appropriately, or if you don't get there, you get one of these. And if you've been deploying OS Query and you're using events, you've probably seen this. And you've been like, what does that mean? Or it's just annoying. So this basically means you have too many events. You're either generating them too much, you're generating too many of them, or you're not querying them more frequently enough. So an, an example of this might be expiring events for, sub for subscriber process events, overflow limit 30,000, which basically means you got 30,000 events and added them to the database before you asked for any of them. And so we had to drop some. And that might sound bad, but like with the talk yesterday about audit, which is like, well, what does audit do? Well, it either drops events or it kernel panics. So we decided not to kernel panic the system. We decided to drop them. If you're mad about this, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this protects you. This will stop OS Query's memory from becoming unmanageable and ballooning up to huge amounts of data because you know, you're generating user events, but you didn't realize you were because you turned on the OpenBSM publisher. And then you're keeping all these events. OS Query's being like, oh man, one day he's going to ask for these. And then you never do. And then OS Query fills up the whole disk. And that would be sad. So we dropped them. So we, we don't want your databases to become gigabytes in size. So, but what we also do is we're going to provide you some isolation from your subscribers to each other. So that way your process events isn't throwing out tons of stuff and you're like, I, I just want SSH logins. And then it's like, no, 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 no. Process events, more important, we're dropping all those. Doesn't happen. Each one has its own buffer and then that way you're not losing data because one table is, so, is so, so noisy. But you shouldn't think that you're failing if you're blowing your buffer every once in a while. That generally happens. Sometimes the system will do something different. Sometimes Chef runs and a whole bunch of stuff happens and you have more events than you would normally have. And you can decide if losing some events is satisfactory for you and if, or if you really need to get all events and you need to up how much your, your frequency of querying that kind of stuff. But the thing is, is that when you query stuff, you move the pointer forward, which is great, and then we can drop past data without warning you about it because you've had it. But you might get duplicate data because, you know, you're probably not generating 30,000 events every single time you're, by the time you're sending the query again. So you might get duplicate data. And this happens on all kinds of tables. And it depends on how you set your events expiry, how much your data how much data will be duplicated or if any will be duplicated, but it is something to be aware of because if you can deduplicate that in the back end, you'll save yourself space. You can also just adjust OS Query's event expiry. You can minimize that as much as possible. Okay, so that's the stuff. That's, that's all the complicated stuff. Now there's two things I want to I wanna talk about building. Now, I have a website. I put this one on my website, so spoilers, if you've already seen my website, I'm sorry. But 
screenshots on Mac OS. This is something people often ask. It's like, how, like you can take screenshots on Mac OS, right? You know, you've got your computer, and like everybody knows this because you take a picture of some graph and you send it to another employee because they're tanking your service. You send them a bad graph. And so you got some screenshot. But if you're using OpenBSM on Mac OS, you can see that. You select from process events. You can even ask, I only want the screenshot utility. You get the PID. You know when it happened. You know where the screenshot went, because that's conveniently in the command line. If you need to monitor this kind of stuff, OpenBSM on Mac OS has got you covered. But I've already talked about this on my website. I want to talk about something that I haven't talked about before. And if you're paying attention, I've already mentioned it. And that's the user interaction events. So you have a, a Mac, but then the user's typing on the keyboard and you know, using the mouse. And you can track that too. So you can know if a user's been active, because if a user is opening a reverse tunnel, you know, that might be fine if they're at work and you know, there's a sev open. But if they're doing it at 3 AM and they're not on their computer, it might be something you want to look into. And you can get this extra context from OS query events. It registers event taps with the system. And by design, this does not look at what the event actually was. You can't even distinguish if something is a key press or a mouse click. And you can enable them uh, optionally. If you say, I only want mouse clicks because I want less data, you can choose to do that. The other thing you might think of is saying that like, oh, maybe this is too granular. Maybe I, I want even less granularity than that. OS Cree, again, has you covered. You can break it down by minute, the number of, of events per minute. You can use that to build a graph, apply extra context to all of the process events and things that you're already getting on the system. You have a better idea now if the user is doing it or if someone else is. And that is catching everything with OS Cree events, done extra fast for time's sake. <laughs>